Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, it is that time of month again. It is time to sit down, drink coffee, and talk about all the books that I read in the previous month. So in July, I ended up reading nine books. One was on audiobook and one was on my Kindle. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. I started off very, very, very strong. I started off with my only five star book of the month and that is none other than Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. So this is the first book in the Last Hour series. If you've watched my channel, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here because I feel like I've said this so many times, but I'm gonna say it again. The Last Hour series is a spin-off from, let me just get it. It's a spin-off from The Infernal Devices. You may have seen this cover around, this is a Clockwork Angel. Please, <laughs> please, please, please do not start this series. Do not read this series unless you've read this. That's just me trying to save you from never being able to read this series because this book is full of spoilers. Full of spoilers <laughs> for this book. And also just full of so many details that reference to this series. So it is so wonderful to read this book and just like knowing all the sort of inside jokes and just like all this information that is referencing this series. If you don't know, The Infernal Devices is like one of my favorite fantasy romance series of all time. And guys, I have a suspicion that the last hour series I'm gonna love even more than The Infernal Devices potentially because I adored this book. Like the way that I love this cast of characters so much. They may potentially become one of my favorite like cast of characters out of any fantasy romance I've read. No, that's not true. I've got such a special place in my heart for Akatar and also Throne of Glass. I would say I love the Throne of Glass characters the most and Akatar is just like, I love it because it's just like my OG. The characters in this series, the world, Cassandra Clare's writing, like I am so enamored. I am obsessed. I love it like i love it so much cassandra clare is easily i is it a bold call i'm gonna say she's probably my favorite author i'll wait until i finish this series and i would have read six books from her but i think she is gonna become my favorite author i think the way she writes is so beautiful the way she oh my god i just dropped my book the way she writes characters and the dynamics between the characters that is my favorite thing and this book, the way that it started off, is not very fantasy heavy. It really seems to focus on the dynamics and the relationships between this cast of characters. And one thing Cassandra Clare is phenomenal at writing is unrequited love. In this book, it's one of those things where it's like, this character loves this character, but that character loves that character. And the pining and the yearning, and also just the friendship between the characters, like I... I am in awe. I love this world and I really can't tell you guys too much about the synopsis because I don't want you to be spoiled for this, but if you're going to take away anything from this video or from my channel, it's just please read The Infernal Devices and then start reading the series and just get into Cassandra Clare if you haven't yet already. Obsessed. <laughs> Five star, loved it, loved it so much. And moving on, the second book I read is Portrait of a Scotsman by Evie Dunmore. So this is a part of like a, an interconnected standalone series. It's called The League of Extraordinary Women. First of all, let's just talk about how gorgeous her covers are. If you don't know, Evie Dunmore is like a Regency romance, historical romance author. And the way that she does it, phenomenal. And when I read her books, I actually put on the Bridgerton soundtrack because like just how beautiful is that soundtrack? It's all instrumental and it's just like the most gorgeous string quartet covering popular songs and it just sounds so beautiful. And when I'm reading these kind of Regency romances and I've got like that string quartet playing in the background, the reading experience is just elevated. I highly recommend doing that if you do like to read like sort of Regency historical romance. Oh my God, it's amazing. Oh, so good. About the book, our main character Hattie, first of all, I love her. 
Like, I loved her so much. She's so funny. I found her very relatable and her sort of like inner monologue, I really connected with her. I feel like me and Hattie are like, like this. Hattie is like an art student. She has such a huge passion for art and art history and the way that she talks about art. And mind you, I am not an artist. I'm not good at art or anything like that. I'm just very interested in art and it's something that really fascinates me. And even if you're not, the way that this is done is so tasteful, so amazing. Like Evie Dunmore's writing is just chef's kiss. Our main character, she just has such a huge passion for art, but this is in like 1880, I think. And so at that time, art is a very male dominated field. And I would say the reason for that is because at this time, women can't really travel. Women can't really do anything unless they're like chaperoned by their husband. So if you're not married, you're kind of just like sat at home. Like you don't really have any freedom as a woman at that time period. And this is before the internet. So imagine trying to be an artist and you don't even have any sort of inspiration for what you're gonna paint or create because you haven't seen the world, you haven't traveled, you also don't even have the internet for like inspiration and seeing things outside of your tiny bubble. How difficult would it be to like come up with incredible art? It'd be so hard. She kind of has like a little bit of a rendezvous with our main character, Lucin? Lucian? I never know how to say that name. He's like the brooding kind of morally gray character and he is very Scottish. I love him very dearly. And so they actually end up getting caught kissing. And obviously this is at a time where if you are seen kissing or with a man alone, he has to marry you. And if he doesn't marry you, then your reputation is tarnished. No man is ever gonna wanna marry you. Even if you're just caught like walking unchaperoned alone with a man. So anyways, they end up having to be married. <laughs> and I loved them. I loved the banter between them. I loved both the characters. I loved the world. I loved the writing. I really, really, really highly recommend Evie Dunmore's books if you haven't yet dabbled into them. They are so good. They're written so well. Like, I just think she writes so beautifully. I love the characters that she creates and I just really love this. This is so good. I also forgot to mention that she is the daughter of his business rival. So Lucian, he is a businessman. He's out there buying land financing stuff whatever businessmen did at that time he does that <laughs> and so she is the daughter of his business rival so when he first sort of meets her he is a bit like hmm this could be good for me in terms of business i feel like i explained this book kind of badly but just read it it was a really 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 good book my rating for this book is a 4.25 star i really enjoyed it okay moving on to <laughs> happy place by emily henry so this is actually my second Emily Henry book. I first read Beach Read. I'll tell you about my sort of experience reading Emily Henry. I tried to read Beach Read about a year ago. I DNF'd it. And then just recently I had this sort of like inkling to kind of pick it back up. I picked it back up. I read it and I did enjoy it. I was like, it was nice. Um, I definitely don't see the hype or I don't understand why her writing is so beloved. And again, this is personal choice. If you love her writing, more power to you, more power to you. I can see why people do like her writing because it's very like, like, <laughs> oh my God, it's gonna seem like I can't think of anything, but that's not true. I think she's a very good writer. <laughs> the Emily Henry girlies are gonna come from my throat. I'm so sorry. Um, No, I think she does write really well. She writes like witty kind of banter really well. And she's very good at descriptive writing. Like if that's kind of your jam, like very descriptive, sort of writing i think you'd really love her books and people seem to really love her romance like she is a very beloved author people were like oh my god happy place you'll love it a lot more because it has a lot more depth than beach read so you should give happy place a go i gave it a go and for me this is a 2.75 star I personally just don't think she's my cup of tea and that is okay i think this is where me and emily henry part ways I've actually recently started getting into contemporary romance, so I do actually enjoy contemporary romance, but there's something about her writing that I don't like, and I can't seem to really put my finger on it. For me, I think my problem with her books, for me, I just don't think I like the way she writes characters. I don't know why, they don't seem real to me. As soon as characters don't seem real to me, so it kind of takes away from the reading experience, which is probably why I think I rate her books quite low. They just don't seem, like believable, like I don't know, there's just something about them that I really don't click with. 
I think my biggest problem with this book is the miscommunication between the main guy and the main girl. And mind you, this is coming from someone who actually does not mind the miscommunication trope. In fact, I sometimes actually like it because it's very realistic. You know what I mean? Like, I think we all deal with miscommunication, people misinterpreting what we're saying. Maybe we also misinterpreted what they were saying. Like, it just happens all the time. Harriet and Wynn, is that their names? Yeah, they'd been engaged for seven years and he broke it off with her and she never knew why. She just, she just never asked him why. As someone who is engaged, I've been with my partner for five years, if he ever ended things with me, the way I would be drilling that man, I'd be like, why and why? And like, do you know what I mean? I would be asking for bullet points <laughs> as to why he's breaking it off with me because I think that would naturally happen in a long-term relationship. If you are in a long-term relationship and you can't communicate, like she just couldn't even ask him. Like, I just think that kind of, mm, I can't speak anymore. I don't know. It, it irked me and it bothered me and yeah. <laughs> Anyways, sorry for my rant guys. Then moving on to another book which also left me disappointed unfortunately. I then went on to read Reckless by Lauren Roberts. Now I actually really enjoyed Powerless. I think I gave it like a 4, either a 4.25 or a 4.5. I really enjoyed that story. I thought it was very fast paced. I enjoyed the plot. I enjoyed the main characters. I enjoyed a lot about that book. This book was a bit of a letdown if I'm honest. It had no plot. <laughs> it had no fantasy. Like this is a fantasy romance. Where was the fantasy and where was the plot? And I do understand that from what I've heard, this is sort of like a filler kind of book and that it's like sort of leading up to the next book. So apparently the next book is going to be phenomenal, action-packed, a bit more heavy on the fantasy. So I really have my fingers crossed and I do think that it will be, especially with the way that this book ended. I did really enjoy the writing, I tabbed it. So I did really enjoy the book. I loved the first 100 pages. Like when I first started this book, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And then after 100 pages, like the middle, like this whole middle chunk of the book, was so repetitive. The same scene was happening over and over and over again. I know that a lot of people have also felt the same way that it just got so repetitive in the middle and it just kind of lost the magic. Like the two main characters, they spend a big chunk of this book together, like side by side. And it just got like a little bit boring for me, very repetitive. They kept like bantering and bickering, but it just got like a little bit annoying and I was like kind of sick of it in the middle. But then the book did redeem itself and in the last 50 pages it got really good and it ended on a very big cliffhanger that's making me very excited to read the third book, which I think is gonna be called Fearless. This is a three star for me. Initially, I think I gave it a 3.5, but as I've sort of sat with my feelings more, I do think I'm gonna give this a three star. Then I went on to read Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Gamis. I really did enjoy this book. This is one of the books that I'd been putting off for a hot minute. It's been sitting in my TBR shelf for I think a year and a half. Yeah, one year and a half, and I've just been putting it off. I don't know why, I just never really felt inclined to read it. And in my TBR video for July, I sort of like blindly chose the books that I was reading. Like I had them all wrapped up and numbered and I used like a number generator to choose my books. And this one got chosen. This is a super highly acclaimed book. It follows the story of Elizabeth. I was gonna call her Christina. It follows the story of Elizabeth. Elizabeth is very like unconventional for that time period. She wants to work, she's a scientist. She doesn't want marriage. She didn't want kids like she, for that time period was a crazy woman. Like nowadays it's kind of common for women. It's actually, it's very common for women to not want those things. Like it's totally normal and very acceptable in society. But in the sixties, you would think a woman is mad for wanting those things. And that's what she wanted. She's in a very male dominated industry and just the way that the men treated her in this book. Like there were some scenes that were quite difficult to read, especially in the beginning. Like I got really like, ugh reading it. So she actually ends up getting fired as a scientist and she ends up starting her own cooking show. It has a really cool twist because she's got all this sort of scientific knowledge. Instead of being like, um, now put some salt in your pasta or whatever, she's like, now use sodium chloride and she'll use scientific terms when sort of explaining what to do while she's cooking. A lot of the housewives at home watching her show felt very inspired 
and she just really inspired a lot of women at that time period to make them realize that they are capable and they can also do things and you know their lives don't have to revolve around just cleaning up around the home and taking care of their husbands and taking care of their kids she kind of made them want and desire more which i really did enjoy however i will say that that kind of plot which is told on the back about her not being a scientist and starting her own cooking show that really only started halfway through the book so the first half of the book like has nothing to do with that and i did find that it moved just a little bit slow and even though it's a super highly acclaimed book it did leave me slightly underwhelmed and i think that's purely just because it was so highly acclaimed and just like so highly spoken of that i was like oh my god this is gonna be like a five star book but it was a 3.75 star for me and i really enjoyed it like i loved the story i thought it was a very good message i really enjoyed the writing but i was just a bit like underwhelmed and i think that's purely because of my expectations then i went on to read memoirs of a geisha by arthur golden i absolutely loved this book when i was reading about the main character and mind you this is actually based off a real person when i was reading about her life and her story from childhood to when she became like the most popular famous geisha in the world at that time i felt like i was her like the way that it's written makes you ache and makes you care for the main girl like i i don't know i was really in this world when reading it so it was a fantastic novel in terms of like pure escapism because I was just so engrossed when reading this book. One thing that made me very sad about this book, which I found out after I'd read it, is Arthur Golden, who wrote this book, he met up with this geisha and sort of wrote this memoir on her behalf. They met up like every day or like every week or something. I think it was over the span of 18 months, they would meet at dinner and he would like put the tape recorder on and they would talk and she would give him her life story from when she was a little girl up until she became the geisha that she was but she gave him the condition that he cannot reveal her identity she was saying to him i want to remain completely anonymous but he went on to reveal her identity and mind you she was very famous at that time so when he wrote this book he kind of exposed her and she went on to sue him so that kind of tainted the reading experience for me i was a bit sad to hear that she went on to sue him just because he exposed her she was also hurt by the way he kind of spun the story because he made it seem like geishas really just rely on like entertaining men and that's kind of like their whole thing but she was like no being a geisha was artistic and it gave me freedom and i think the story was just spun a little bit differently so that kind of tainted my experience after i'd read it but my initial experience after reading it was that it was a 4.75 star and it still remains at that rating but i just feel a little bit like i don't know it just made it seem like a bit mm, to me once i knew that he kind of exposed her like that and that potentially he spun the story around to make it seem a bit different than what it was so i don't know you know i kind of just took the story with a grain of salt i'm sure a lot of it is very accurate but I am also assuming that Arthur Golden added some fiction in there. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, and then I read Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. Guys, this book surprised me. I did not think I was gonna really love this book the way that I did. I genuinely devoured this book. I really, really loved it, and I just want to say that I love Archer. I want to protect Archer. If anyone ever hurts Archer, I will come for them. So our main characters, Brie and Archer, they both had very traumatic past. Something very tragic has happened to the both of them. So Brie is sort of running away from something very tragic that happened in her life. And she moves to this very small town called Pelion, which is where Archer lives. And Archer has had a very tragic past, which you do learn about, I think like just over halfway in the book. They end up forming this very beautiful relationship. And it was just a very sweet novel like i really loved this book like i really really did i enjoyed the writing i loved the main characters i loved the backstory i also loved the small town vibes in this book so because she moves to the small town it had that cozy small town vibe where like she works at a cute little diner where they serve coffee and serve bacon and eggs and there's a lake and there's just like a small group of people within that town like i really liked the small town vibe of this book this book took me on an emotional roller coaster especially towards like the last 100 pages by the time you watch this there will be like a reading vlog of me reading this it would have already been out or it's just about to come out 
so look out. I really adored this book. I gave it a 4.5 star. I thought it was just a really, really good book and it really did touch my heart and yeah, it was a great book. Not a five star. It didn't have that five star feel for me, but I just really enjoyed reading it and when I wasn't reading it, I really was looking forward to getting back into reading it, which is always a feeling that I love. So yeah. 4.5, I highly recommend. And then next, I ended up reading Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. I actually ended up listening to the audiobook of this because the narrator for this book has a very nice accent. Like she's got a very nice English accent. I just found her very like pleasant and lovely to listen to. I really liked the way that she narrated the story. It was like an audiobook that I would like put on when I was like cleaning up, you know, doing life admin things. And I was very very engrossed in the novel. It's definitely a book that I wish I actually read instead of listening to an audiobook. Whenever I listen to an audiobook, I don't rate the book as high as if I've read it. I don't know why. Um, but even with the audiobook, I gave this book a four star. And honestly, it could have been higher had I actually read the book. I think the premise of this book is so cool. So if you don't know, Girl with a Pearl Earring is a very, very, very famous painting by something Vermeer. What the hell's his name? Johannes Vermeer, who is a very famous Dutch painter from the 17th century. I actually think this book is what gave that portrait the fame that it has today. Like it's a very known sort of painting. And it's also been turned into a film with Scarlett Johansson and Colin Firth. This novel really brought life to the sort of backstory of that painting. So I'll insert the painting here. So what Tracy Chevalier, the author did, is she kind of just gave a backstory to that painting, like an imagination of what happened for this painting to come alive. So what happens in this book is her dad ends up losing his vision. And because he's lost his vision, he can no longer do his trade. So again, this is like the 17th century. And he is a tile painter. And he obviously is bringing in the money, but because he's lost his vision, he can't do his trade anymore. So our main character ends up being sent off as a maid and she is working in Johannes Vermeer's Vermeer's house who is the painter. So over time while she's working as a maid in this house she ends up developing some sort of relationship with Vermeer who is the painter and at first it's more so like she's in love with the art. She's so fascinated by the process of how he paints and how he does it. Like you can really see her falling in love and gaining some sort of like desire to paint and just a desire to just do more. He also ends up gaining some sort of like attraction towards her and just kind of being mesmerized by her, especially because she has to clean up his art room, but every now and then she'll kind of do some things or maybe she'll like add to his painting and he's like, oh my god, wait, she's actually really good at what she does and he enjoys teaching her about art. My battery just died. Um, what was I saying? I hate when my battery dies and I completely like lose my train of thought. What was I saying, you guys? I think I was just talking about like how as they're living together in this house and kind of developing this relationship, their intimacy definitely causes a bit of a stir within the household and it becomes a bit more obvious that they've developed something a little bit more than just like a maid and you know, her master. Definitely recommend this book. Okay, and then moving on to the last book that I read in July. I read the majority of this book just yesterday. Just yesterday, I read like 90% of this book. It was kind of crazy. So I ended up reading Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. This is the first book in the Kindred's Curse saga. When I first started my channel, I had a few comments from people telling me to read this book. So I ended up getting it on Kindle Unlimited a few months ago, it was just like sitting in my Kindle library. The other day I was really in the mood to like read a fantasy romance and I was really in the mood to like read on my Kindle, you know, it's just so easy to read on your Kindle. And so I was like, oh, let me pick up Spark of the Everflame. And boy, am I glad that I did. Guys, this book was so good. So, so good. It just kept getting better and better and better. Like I was already enjoying the first 20% of it and then it just got better and better. And then I was loving it halfway through. And then it got better and better and better. And then I was 80% through. And guess what happened? It kept getting better and better and better. <laughs> Ended on such a cliffhanger. This is such a good book. This is a fantasy romance series. It's not super popular, but I feel like it is on the rise. I think so. I hope so. It was so good. 
I loved the actual like fantasy world that it was set in. There's a bit more like political intrigue in my opinion, but I found like the politics of their world so interesting. Like I was genuinely so fascinated by the separation in their world. Our main character, she is a mortal. So she doesn't have any sort of special powers. She's just like a normal, a normal person. And they live in this world where the descendants are sort of like the rulers of this world and the mortals are like the less than people. And the descendants all have like some sort of magical ability and it's also separated into like nine different realms. So there's the realm of light and shadow, the realm of truth and... Oh, I forgot what they're called. I forgot what the realms are called, but it was just very cool learning about the different realms and like the sort of history behind it. And I really want more about that in the second book. The love interest is a descendant who's like one of the more magical people. He's actually the son of the king. There is definitely the enemies to lovers going on, definitely slow burn and just a very interesting book. I loved the plot of the book. So I just loved everything going on in this book. I really liked the writing. I loved the plot. I really loved the main character. And I'm so excited to continue the series. I just know it's going to be amazing. Like the way that the world is sort of being built and set up. I just think book two is going to be amazing. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to reading it. It is on Kindle Unlimited, which I'm very glad for because this is like an indie published book I think so it's very expensive to purchase on Amazon at least for me so I was like oh I'm just very happy it's available for free on Kindle Unlimited did I already say my rating I can't remember this is a 4.5 to a 4.75 star for me I loved it that is my July wrap up thank you guys so much for watching my video I hope you enjoyed it let me know what you read in July did you get any five stars any DNFs let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!